my brothers and sisters and friends. I pray that you guys are all doing well today. It is July 7th, 2016. And to all my new subscribers out there, thank you for coming to this channel. I pray that my videos will bless you. I made this for the Lord. This is God's channel, so I don't have anything to do with it. If I wanted to quit, I couldn't because, like I said, I don't have anything to do with it. I'm just a vessel. I'm just a holy vessel that is willing to be used by God Almighty, from Yahweh, from our Lord and my Savior, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so, um, with that said, God is so good. After one of the last videos that I made where God revealed to me and he spoke to me something, um, I did my Jesus Calling today and I have I have two books that I do for devotionals and one is this, the God's Promises book and Jesus Calling and so the Lord really speaks to me He really speaks to me and um, and it's just amazing how He uses His Word and the, these devotional books t to share with me just what I'm feeling and to give me the answer that I need you know it, it, that's what that is a relationship that is having a relationship with him is to be open and real with him and to tell him how you feel though he knows he knows all things you can't hide your feelings from him and but to just you do that you know if you're feeling a certain way if you somebody got you angry you would call your girlfriend and you'd be like you know like oh my god you, you need someone to vent to well he is there 24 7 we can vent to him you know and he is loving and it's not like he's gonna cuss us out or hang up the phone on us or rebuke us he doesn't do any of that his line is open 24 7 and he gives us the best advice that anybody could ever give and it's true and it's real and it's wisdom and so I'm also teaching my son he has a Jesus Calling book and for his devotionals so you know we make time out together I anoint him and we pray and thank the Lord and um, God gives him a word and you know, we just talk about it. So I'm teaching him these things. You know, I wasn't taught these things, but that's okay because I am learning and I am being that mom, that um, that mother that the Lord has created me to be, to raise their child up in Him. You know, so it's it's all good. God is in control. So in my Jesus Calling book today. I'm going to tell you what it says. It's so good. Rest in my presence when you need refreshment. Resting is not necessarily idleness, as people often perceive it. When you relax in my company, you are demonstrating trust in me. Trust is a rich word laden with meaning and, meaning and direction for your life. I want you to lean on, trust, and be confident in me. When you lean on me for support, I delight in your trusting confidence. Many people turn away from me when they are exhausted. They associate me with duty and diligence. So they try to hide from my presence when they need a break from work. How this saddens me. As I spoke through my prophet Isaiah, and returning to me and resting in me, you shall be saved, and quietness and trust shall be your strength. And so when I read that last part, I was like, wow, because it sounded really familiar to me. Like, I just read that recently. And, and then I looked at the scriptures that it gave me, and it gave me Proverbs 5. And Isaiah 30, 15. So, Isaiah 30, I was like, what? 
And I say, God, you led me to this earlier today. Oh, I feel heat and fire all over me. Ooh, it's hot. Um, thank you, Jesus. I said, God, you led me to this earlier today. You know, whenever I was, I told you in my other video that I was, um, I was thinking, I got very discouraged with the attacks coming against me. And I was going to act on impulse and quit. You know, just stop making videos and leave. And, you know, but I didn't. I didn't act on impulse. Praise the Lord. You know, that is the work of God because before I would have acted on impulse. <laughs> Thank you. And so I didn't do that. And so I was patient and I waited and I waited and I cried out for the Lord for an answer. And he gave me my answer. And he gave me Isaiah 30 in verse 8 down and um it is just amazing to me because here in my devotional today the lord gives me isaiah 30 now that is not a coincidence okay that is called a confirmation that is called a confirmation that jesus was speaking to me earlier and that i heard from the correct voice my god is not punishing me for anything. I am not being punished by anything, by any means. So I don't know why some people out there have see that. It's just deceiving and you need to pray about that. You know, rebuke that devil. Not not even pray about it. Don't pray about that because if you are thinking that this video is God punishing me, you are listening to the wrong God. So anyway, let me get back to, um, let me not get off track here. So I read that, and that's just a confirmation. I'm just like, wow, God, you know, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jesus. You, you know just what I need. You know just what I need to hear. But not just what I need, but what my brothers and my sisters out there need, too, who are enduring these attacks, who are people that are coming against them. And it's not them. It's the enemy causing all this, all this chaos and ruckus in our life. You know, but the Lord is fighting for us and his angels and his army is watching over us and he is doing for us what we cannot do for ourselves. And so, like I said in another video, that though you are looking at your life, though you are looking at your, your situation, to not focus on that, you know, to look up, to look at God and to trust in him. In my other video, I said that we live by faith and not by sight, you know. And to live by faith and not by what you see in front of you, you have to trust the Lord. You have to trust Jesus. You have to put your full and 100% trust in Him. You cannot waver. And so yesterday... During my devotional, I didn't share this, but I'm sharing it now. Because, again, he led me to this. So I think there is a reason for it, and so I'm going to share it with you. So in my God's Promises book, I was led to trusting God. I was led to that yesterday as well as today. And I'm going to share this with you now. So... Many players appear on the stage of Gethsemane. Judas and his betrayal, Peter and his sword, the soldiers and their weapons. And though these are crucial, they aren't instrumental. The encounter is not between Jesus and the soldiers. It is between God and Satan. Satan dares to enter yet another garden, but God stands and Satan has in a prayer. Satan falls in the presence of Christ. One word from his lips and the finest army in the world collapse. Satan is silent in the proclamation of Christ. Not once did the enemy speak without Jesus' invitation. Before Christ, Satan had nothing to say. Satan is powerless against the protection of Christ. When Jesus says he will keep you safe, he means it. Hell will have to get through him to get to you. 
Jesus is able to protect you. When he says he will get you home, he will get you home. I'm like, ooh, amen. Yes, you know, yes, yes. So even if we have to endure, it's okay because we will. Jesus will get us home. Satan is powerless against the protection in the, of Christ. Yes, Jesus is so powerful and mighty. A mighty God. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. And so the scripture I was given here about promises of trusting God. We worship God through his spirit. And our pride is in Christ Jesus. We do not put trust in ourselves or anything we can do. And that's Philippians 3.3. 3. But the person who trusts in the Lord will be blessed. The Lord will show him that he can be trusted. He will be strong like a tree planted near water that sends its roots by a stream. It is not afraid when the days are hot. It leaves are always green. It does not worry in a year when no rain comes. It always produces fruit. And that's Jeremiah 17, 7, 8. And then, when I am afraid, I will trust you. I praise God for his word. I trust God, so I am not afraid. What can human beings do to me? And that is Psalm 56, 3 and 4. So, both of these, um, the words here that the Lord led me to, is about rest and trust. It's trust. It's the word is trust. Trusting in Him. And take time. Make, make, make time. That is a crucial thing in our lives that we need to do as followers of Christ. You know, our fleshly desires seem to try to take over more and more every single day because we are living in dark times right now, very dark times. And there are severe attacks going on all over. I mean, you can see it. And I just praise the Lord. I praise Jesus that I'm covered by his blood because you can see the violence everywhere. You can see these demons that are just entering these people and that they are just killing people left and right. That they are killing their own children and they are killing their own family, you know, their own wife, you know, and, and murdering just all these people. You see it everywhere. You see this anger. You see what this world is coming to. And it's sad because it's only going to get worse. And though people are living with fear, they are living in fear of a terrorist attack. With Jesus in our hearts and in our lives, He can give us peace. He can provide that peace that surpasses all understanding. That no human being can even comprehend of. Because His peace is just so amazing. He can give us peace to stand, stand strong and give us the strength that we need to endure and keep running this race because it's almost over. Just a little bit longer and He is there. He is there. He's there with us. He's inside of us. But there's so much that is going on and things are coming fast or ending. It's coming fast to an end. It's it's just speeding up like rampant and at rapid speed. And, um, you know, the Lord, we need to make time for Him. That is a must because if we don't make time for Him, we're putting other things before Him. And that is dangerous in our walk because our faith will decrease. And without faith, you have nothing. Faith is everything. That's why the Bible says if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, that faith can produce such a harvest you don't even know of. Just this faith as small as a mustard seed is all you need. And God will work with that. He will work with that. And so, 
rest in him. When you pray and you seek the Lord, put on worship music. Take time. Don't rush God. And if it's not, you know, you got to be patient. You have to be patient with him. You know, people expect to receive a word now. People, we live with instant gratification. We want things now. But God has no time limit. There is no time limit in heaven. It is forever. It is eternity is what it is. There is no time limit. So you cannot put a time limit on God. You know, he is there. When you seek him wholeheartedly with all that you have, and don't make it like it's a chore. Don't make it like it's just, you know, a, a routine that you do this, you know, like it, it's... It's not a chore. It's not difficult. You should, should want to. You should want to spend time with him. You know? He has so much to share for you. To share with you. And fill you up. You know? It's when we take time out to make time for him. We are filled with the strength to endure. We are given the joy and the peace to overcome. And we are given wisdom and confidence in Him. And today, my confidence and faith and trust in Him has just increased much more because He showed Himself again. And your comments truly help me keep going. And I know that there's some people who watch this and who don't comment. But even you guys, just, you know, knowing that you watch and are not cursing me, you know, it really helps. And I thank you all. So um, that's all I have to share with you. And I'll be back later to tell you um, about my husband and his testimony of what just happened. So that's it. Love you guys. Bye.